or Boys and Men of Color Summit that took place a few weeks ago. A few of the workshops uh, were, or one of the workshops was uh, pretty much on the use of the N-word. Another was how the music industry is corrupting the youth of today. And another was on stereotypes. Now let's take a look at the clip. Jonathan Hunter. And I'm Matthew Germany. My name is Nick What? My favorite workshop was about not saying the word nigga. And I learned that it's really an offensive term. It means just you're um, like being stupid. That the way we use it isn't its real meaning. And that how we shouldn't use it as much as we used to we normally do for what it means. All right, my favorite workshop was a nigga workshop. I learned a lot in there that we're not ignorant people. And in our generation, we just use that word over and over again. We shouldn't be using that word. Second definition of it is victims of prejudice that are similar to those that are suffered by black people. People who are economically, politically, or socially disenfranchised. You guys understand what that means? It means that in order for you to be a nigga, you have to be everything which is considered unsuccessful in our society. Definitely one thing y'all take away is not repeating, not repeating negative habits. Switch it out. The nigga word, just like yeah. telling everybody to stop using it and giving them reasons to why they want to stop using it. And I mean, if they don't like take anything from it, then I guess, but I mean, I hope it helps out other people to where it just dies down. It just stops sagging so much. <laughs> Cause people think negative comments about you, you got your pants down on your butt and stuff, you know. It's not good. Take away the fact that I don't apply myself as much as I need to and should, so like, being able to like manage my time better, like not doing stuff that I do, um, and being able to like take two hours more out of the day to study, to focus on my grades, and to like better myself as a person. I learned that, for what I'll bring back, is that, it's just what I said about the word nigga, that really we shouldn't use it as much, it's stupid, um, it's offensive, and it's just nobody really knows the history of it. Thank you. Thank you so much.
everyone out there doing today. I'm Dwayne Hankerson, and I'm here today to introduce one of our very own, Lily Sapon. She'll be discussing how our youth today neglect their own culture. Hi, my name is Lily Sapon, and I am a part of the SAC BHC Youth Media Team. Personally, as I'm growing older, I have lost touch with my cultural heritage. I no longer speak my language fluently, nor do I understand my family's customs and traditions. I've been adapting to the American culture and forgetting my own Mian culture. We are village people that reside in Laos. However, due to the Vietnam War, many people fled to Thailand for safety in the refugee camps. มาซาโฟมันก็มีมาตัวอย่างน้อยกว่าตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวต
colorful, but the spider plants will be the ones that stick it out. Hello, how are you guys doing today? I'm Dwayne Hankerson coming to you from Sacramento BHC's Youth Media Team. And today we'll be talking to you about an event that took place a few weeks ago called Girls on the Rise, where they spoke to girls on eating healthy and how to save money while eating healthy. Uh, community eligibility has to do with school districts. If you have a school district at, that meets the criteria of 40% or more free and reduced lunch, that means that everyone in the school, whether or not they sign a form and take the lunch, can get free lunch and free breakfast. That's big. That's really huge. So, but to get to the 40%, that means you have to have participation, um, enough participation to qualify you, to qualify your district. And there's a couple ways that you can do that, but the free and reduced lunch form is the way districts identify those numbers. So that form is used whether or not you take the lunch. It's very important that you fill it out and encourage um, families at your school to fill it out. So, that could be a possible campaign at your school site. We're gonna add some salt. How much salt? Two coarse salt. I'm not sure what that means. Two teaspoons. Okay, two teaspoons of salt. Woo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna squeeze in. Oh. We're going to squeeze one line. Add that tang to it. That. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
and then we're gonna mix it. We're gonna mix it, and after that, we have some guacamole. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, we're gonna have some some chips coming out, and everyone can have some taste and salsa and some guacamole. Thank you. Momentum Health Fair here at Sac Pi to promote health and wellness to our students here in Sacramento. Uh, we have a lot of booths here that talk a little bit about nutrition, fitness, and mental resiliency, and how easy it is to, to practice these healthy uh, habits um, in a very simple and fun way. My name is Rangine Essence at HSP and I work for Moon to Green. I'm the um, Senior Program Director for our Community Advocacy and Engagement. 
Today is uh, a big public event for um, that's preceding our charrette. It's called the Land Use Learning Workshop. So the purpose of this event is to help educate our residents about different land use issues and topics. So things like circulation, housing, social equity, youth engagement, um, and food access. So that they can get grounded in these topics and when they come to the charrette um, in a few weeks, they have a little bit more of an informed background to be able to pull from when they're giving us input on changes they want to see in the community. Charette is a multi-day collaborative planning event and so the purpose of the charrette that we're doing is going to be specifically within the BHC and um, our goal is to create community action plans and the topics are in the areas that I just mentioned um, except we'll be including economic development as well. So the, the purpose is really to be able to gather resident stakeholder input about the way that the, the community really wants to see things change, um, improvements, um, sort of the ideal vision for a future BHC, what, what it could look like if it really reflected what residents um, wanted. Awesome.